Legend of the Cultivation God, Chapter Minus One, Reclaiming the Land An Ordinary Day, on a vast space of land where skies were clear and the sun shining brilliantly, suddenly, a ring-like object appeared in the sky out of nowhere, as though it has suddenly crossed over from another dimension, and with great speed, shot towards the mountain peak, while carrying an eerie woo-woo sound, following normal physics. When an object descends from the sky, it would be accompanied by a trail of copious gas, followed by a deafening sound, as though it is announcing its arrival to everyone in the world. However, in this particular case, the object only emitted some inaudible sound, before burying itself deeply into the mountains, where it was no longer noticeable. In such a short period of time, it did not capture the attention of any living being, even the birds that were nearby had no time to react. These frightened birds circled the sky for a few short whiles, before leaving the incident out of its mind, without anyone knowing, this land had gained another mysterious object. After countless of years, the wastelands became cultivated and large oceans receded into seas. The human population expanded, and the aforementioned mountain weathered into a knoll. In fact, many previously isolated areas had worn down into land which was suitable for human population. What kind of story would this mysterious ring bring? Jean Chauhua had a face as though he felt blessed by the gods, because right now, his eyes were firmly set upon the farmland before him, as though it was a succulent piece of five-spice meat, instead of calling it a farmland. It would be more appropriate to call this land as wasteland in the hills. Because it was situated in the middle of a knoll where the gradient of the slope in this small area was not too steep, however, this piece of land was the result of the precious efforts by Jean Shaowa's father over the past T.W. O months, even though land was abundant in this area, not much of it could be used to cultivate crops, hence, everyone is always thinking of finding good land that can be used to produce grains. Most people from the village would choose to find land closer to the river. But perhaps because Jean Shaowa's family was too poor to appease the elders, they had no choice but to choose a piece of land that is so far away. The village that Zhang Shaohua lived in was named Gur. Its total area consists of approximately four li asterisk of even ground, which was sandwiched between the mountains. The mountains were not tall, it would be more accurate to call them hillocks. A large river flowed across the village. And on the river was a small bridge that connected the roads. There were approximately 40 plus. Households in the Gur village, with half of them surnamed Gur and actually belonging to a small family clan situated at the center of the village. Asterisk Tien, lay 500 meters the village people were mostly simple yet realistic people, so most of the important village matters were decided by the Gur elders, even though everyone was a member of the village, when it came to petty matters that require arbitration. The Gur elders would mostly side with those who were surnamed Gur, the best locations. In the village had also been taken by the Gore households. Nevertheless, village life was simple and peaceful. There was never a matter that could not be resolved, so everyone was contented with the way things were. Zhang Xiaohua's mother Gore Sufei was a member of the Gore clan, despite only receiving partial support and having long passed its glory days, by the time it reached his mother's generation, apart from Gore Sufei. There was no male descendant, thus, to appease and take care of his. Grandfather, Gur said, Zhang Shaohua's father, Zhang Kai, married into the Gur family. The saying goes that a farming family depends on labor. However, Gur San had no sons. And due to a series of unfortunate events, he could not fulfill his intention to adopt a boy from his relatives, and thus, the family's financial situation has fallen into dire straits. Fortunately, Zhang Kai did not disappoint him as his son in law. After entering the Gur household, he became an invaluable addition who not only worked in the fields, but also improved the standing of the family to above where it previously was. A year later, Gur Sufei became pregnant, and Gur Sen gained a grandson, who was named Zhang Zhaolong. Seeing his grandson, Gur Sen felt relieved for the future of the family, but just as things were progressing in the right direction, a year later, Gur Sen became sick from overwork in his hard life, and never recovered since then. Illness to a poor family was like natural disaster that was impossible to recover from. To cure his father-in-law, Zhang Kai sold all the valuables in the house, but alas, he could not rescue Guo San's life which was like a candle flickering in the wind. Thus, when Zhang Zhaolong was two years old, Guo San finally passed away. The only thing Zhang Kai could look forward to was the birth of his second child. On his deathbed, 
Gorsan decided to the name the unborn child if the child was a boy. He would be called Zhang Xiaohu, and if the child was a girl, she will be called Zhang Xiaohua. After Gorsan passed away, Zhang Kai's mother-in-law also declined in health from her sorrow. And only after Zhang Xiaohu's birth did her spirits improve slightly, which halted the series of misfortunes the household was facing. A farmer's lifeblood was the land he farms on, compared to old Gu's times when there was not enough manpower. The small plot of land currently owned by the household could no longer sustain its increasing household size. Out of desperation, Zhang Kai took his sons and wife to the village elder, who eventually gave face to the deceased Gu San and granted the pitiable household a small plot of land near the river. Zhang Xiaohua was born when his eldest brother was seven. That was when the family already had two and a half men's worth of manpower, and the difficulties of the past were easing up, speaking of Zhang Xiaohua's birth. It was a noteworthy occasion because on that day, a two-month drought finally had let up, and ended with a heavy downpour on that very night he was born. The rain became so heavy that the bridge was no longer passable, which was truly a frightening sight for the people who lived in the mountains. And when Gur Sufei was giving birth to Zhang Xiaohua, she saw flower petals envelop the sky. Thus, Zhang Kai was full of anticipation towards Zhang Xiaohua, to the extent that he invited a learned man in the village to pick a name for his son, names such as Zhang Wu, Zhang Ning, Zhang Zuo, etc. were thrown around, and after much consideration, Gor Sufei thought of the falling petals and was reminded of her deceased father, thus deciding on such a feminine name for her son. TL, Xiaohua means little flower, Xiaohua is currently 12 years old, and since the children in a farmer's household mature early, Xiaohua had already begun to join his father and two elder brothers in helping to toil the land. It was not that Zhang Kai did not consider sending his children to school, to read and write, but the village was a small village with not many literate villagers, and thus they could not support a village school. The neighboring village belonged to a rather large clan, and the school fees that it required from the Gur. Village children were high. In the case of Xiaolong and Xiaohu, there was no need for any consideration because the family's situation was truly unable to support their education expenses. In Xiaohu's case, he did go to school for a few days, but, according to the advice of his teacher, Xiaohu's potential in the literary path was limited, and that he would not be able to recognize more than a few words, even if he were to put in all his efforts. Much less become someone noteworthy, Zhang Kai weighed the options, took another glance at Xiaohu's pleading eyes and thick eyebrows, and finally decided to give up the pipe dream of having an scholar in the household. Thus, he brought Xiaohua back to the village to farm. Rather, it was Xiaohua's mother who remembered the day when Xiaohua was born, and would time to time invite the literate people in the village to impart a little something to her son. Even though Xiaohua enjoyed following his brother's footsteps in farming, but under the forced supervision of his mother, he was finally able to recognize some words and become the most learned in his household. Today was the first day Xiaohua would farm by himself. His father had earlier told him that this plot of land would belong to him, and it can be considered to be his future livelihood. Even though the land did not seem ideal for crop cultivation, Xiaohua remembered a scholar in the village who once said, with a goal, one can begin with a beginning. The road to success is halfway complete with success. The day when he reaches his goal will not be too far, and Xiaohua's goal was to eat a succulent slice of five spiced meat every day. November marked the beginning of winter. The sun was still in the sky lending warmth to an otherwise cold weather. The winds blew from the hills, bringing a foreboding sense of winter, but Xiaohua's attention was placed elsewhere, carrying his hoe. He began to work continuously on this small plot of land. Firstly, he dug up a drain around the semi-oval boundary, and then began to clear up the small pebbles and rocks inside it. Next, he proceeded to remove the weeds, before turning the soil to loosen it so it could be used to cultivate crops. Farm work is naturally time. Intensive, and when Xiaohua was done with the above-mentioned tasks, it was already afternoon. Xiaohua stopped his work, wiped the sweat on his forehead, and walked towards where he came from where he retrieved a vat of water his mother prepared. Talking continuous gulps to quench his thirst, then, he stretched his body until he was comfortable, even though he had previous farming experiences, because he was the smallest. His father and brothers would only leave the simpler tasks to him. Now, Xiaohua was more aware of the difficulties of farming, but when thinking of his grandmother and mother, and his family, 
he felt as though his efforts were worthwhile. Xiao Hua had previously learned to read characters from the young students in the village. Instead of concentrating in his studies, Xiao Hua would often listen about these scholars and their dreams for the future, which could lead him to dream about his own alternate fantasy. However, he was now faced with reality, and as he lowered his head to face the ground, he broke free from his daydream which was a small respite to his hard day of work. Just at that moment, his stomach rumbled in hunger. In the past, he would always have lunch at home with his mother. But this morning, his mother said that she would go over to bring his lunch. Looking at the time, she should be arriving soon. Indeed, not long after, a sound came from downslope Xiao Hua. Come help mother. To reach the plot of land, one had to follow a small winding slippery route up. The first time he came over to look at the land, he had already slipped and fell. Zhang Xiaohua quickly replied, Mom, wait a moment, I will be down in a flash. Do not come up by yourself. When Xiaohua reached the base of the hill, he saw his mother carrying a bamboo basket waiting by the roadside. Xiaohua took the basket, supported his mother while bringing her to climb up slope to sit on a rock. Before opening the basket to look at the contents, in the basket, there was a bowl of five spiced meat, as well as several pieces of plain buns. After sensibly asking after his mother, he began to tuck in, seeing Xiao Hua devour the food. Gore Sufei felt slightly heartbroken and said, Eat slowly, do not choke on and have some water. Mom, why did you make five spiced meat today? Xiao Hua asked, Today is your first day of farm work. Your father has already informed me yesterday to prepare this for you as congratulations. Xiao Hua's mother looked lovingly at her youngest son. It has been hard on you, although you are only 12, when other children your age would be studying in the hall. You are here alone toiling the land, mom. Didn't you say that eldest brother started farm work at the age of 10? I am already fortunate enough. Furthermore, second brother has to share the land with eldest brother, while I already own a piece of land solely from myself. I cannot even begin to feel happy seeing his mother beginning to nag. He continued, Grandmother, has she had the meat yet? Your grandmother is already 80 plus. How could she eat these things? I have already made some plain kanji for her, Xiao Hua's mother said. Only after eating so much did you remember to care for your grandmother, to think that she was only thinking of you the whole morning. Xiao Hua rubbed his head in embarrassment. He had indeed forgotten to consider the feelings of his grandmother. Speaking of Xiao Hua's grandmother, a grimace formed over Gur Sufei's face as the days passed by. Her children grew up, and her mother's body had grown weaker considerably, even though hitting 80 was rare among farm folks. Who would not wish to live slightly longer? Recently, Xiao Hua's grandmother has turned blind, and despite her and her husband's persuasion, she refused to see a doctor, complaining that her loss of vision was a natural part of aging, and that money could be better spent elsewhere. Seeing Xiao Hua finish his meal and water, Gur Sufei said, Xiao Hua, end your work earlier today so that your grandmother can see you sooner. I will still need to visit your father and brothers. Xiao Hua was surprised and replied, Mom, I have already eaten all that five spiced meat. What? Will father and brother eat? It is okay. There are still other dishes. Remember to end your work earlier and try not catch a cold. Gur Sufei lovingly caressed Xiao Hua's head. As though he was still a tender child, Zhang Xiao Hua supported his mother down the knoll, and as he looked at his mother's back, he felt shame in his heart. How could he have eaten all the five spiced meat by himself? <laughs> Legend of the Cultivation God, Chapter Minus Two, Digging a Well, Even Though the Mountains Were Cold in the Afternoon, Zhang Xiaohua's enthusiasm was only growing hotter. Nevertheless, the progress he made was still less compared to the morning's worth of work. There were a lot of rocks on the wasteland, many of them were buried deep in the ground and were not easy to pry. By the time the sun set and twilight arrived, Jean Xiaohua has only shifted away a few larger rocks, even hurting his hand in the process, especially at his perlicue, which hurt even more whenever it came into contact with the cold wind. He was still a child after all. Raising his head to look at the plot of wasteland that he had worked on for the entire day. Despite feeling reluctant, Jean Xiaohua knew it was time to return home. He then picked up his hoe and water container and started to head towards home. The sky has turned dark, and if he had chosen to stay, his father and brothers would come over to look for him, and his grandmother would worry. There was some distance between the plot of wasteland and his home, otherwise, his mother would not have needed to bring over his lunch. As he walked along the hilly path, despite being tired, Jean Xiaohua's mood was 
Exceptionally good, his father had already forewarned him that reclaiming the land would require much significant time, and today was only going to be the beginning, later on. He would still need to loosen the rock into soil, plant the seedlings, water the growing crops, watering the crops, the land was so high in altitude, and was so far from the river, how could he water his crops if there was no water source nearby? Why had he not thought of this earlier, when this problem came into his mind? Zhang Xiaohua could not help but increase his pace. When he entered the village boundaries, the sky had already turned pitch black, but there were still many youths playing around. Seeing Xiaohua carry his hoe, a few of the more familiar youth could not help but inquire about his work. Thus, Xiaohua had no choice but to answer each and every question. It seems that reclaiming land in the knolls was a significant event in a village which faced scarcity in grains. However, Xiaohua appeared absent-minded, which the other youths attributed to tiredness, and they did not continue to pester him, letting Xiaohua return home. Zhang Xiaohua's house was in the southern part of the village. And according to Feng Shui, it was not a very good place. Nevertheless, the area was quite large, and after Zhang Kai's blood and sweat, he built a small courtyard. The fence around the courtyard was not high, and was made of inexpensive yellow mud. So outsiders would look over the barrier easily, from afar. Zhang Xiaohua could see his grandmother holding on to her walking stick while waiting at the gate entrance, due to her poor vision. His grandmother could not leave the house as and when she likes. And the reason for her waiting at the fence door was to welcome her youngest grandson, hearing the sound of footsteps that gradually grew louder, a smile grew on her face as she asked, Xiaohua, you finally returned, was today tiring? Zhang Xiaohua hastened his pace to complete the last few steps, put down the hoe and water container, and supported his grandmother's arm as he replied, Not tired at all, grandmother, it is not as if I have never done farm work before anyway. Grandmother held Xiaohua's hands in relief, Our Xiaohua has grown into an adult, grandmother is a muddlehead has forgotten, his grandmother just so happened to brush against his perlicue, which caused Xiaohua to suck his breath involuntarily. Despite not making any noise, his grandmother was astute. Enough to tell, and said loudly, Xiao Kai, come and look at your son. Zhang Xiao was father actually returned not much earlier, and was currently at the courtyard washing up. Hearing his mother-in-law, he walked over and looked carefully. It is no big deal, mother. Xiao Hua was so hardworking that his hands cracked from overwork. It will be fine in a few days. Should we go to the old chin in the village for some ointment? As she was asking. Gur Sufei walked out from the house carrying some stuff, and said, there is no need, mother, didn't we get some for Xiaohu to use recently, there is still a bit left from then, when Xiaohua sleeps tonight, I shall apply some on him, and it would be better the very next day, the weather has turned, cold, and the wind has picked up, I will bring the rice over soon, Xiaohua, help me support your grandmother home, Zhang Xiaohua carefully supported his grandmother back into the house, leaving the water scarcity problem right at the back of his, Head, after dinner, his parents were carefully weaving baskets under a small light, while the three siblings were at another side helping out. Zhang Kai then asked Zhang Xiaohua about his progress in the fields, working alone is indeed slow. After Xiaohu finished helping out Zhao Long with the field beside the river, I will ask him to go over to give a hand. Zhang Xiaolong also said, do not rush, Xiaohua, once we are done. Father and I will go over to help as well, so the land should be done. Before winter, Zhang Xiaohua replied, Why would I worry? Didn't father already say, Reclaiming the land must be done carefully, and slowly, if need be, if done well. The crops that grow from the land will be healthier, and hence yield a better harvest. At this point, Xiaohua remembered the water source issue, and asked, But father, how can I water the crops in the future? Zhang Kai stopped what he was doing, and said, To raise this up, have you thought of a solution yet? Looking at his brothers with pleading eyes, Zhang Xiaohua asked, Your lands are close to the river, so you can fetch water easily. The hill is so far and tall. Surely you do not expect me to fetch water from the river as well? Zhang Kai laughed. Xiaohua. What is behind the hill? Xiaohua pondered. Isn't there a pit behind? That is right. Over there is the intersection of three knolls, and we should be able to build a well at that place. Seems like you have already planned ahead, Gur Sufei smiled while praising her husband. In that case, father, when do we start building the well? Zhang Xiaohua asked with some impatience, once you finished evening out the land. Before winter arrives, we will take the opportunity when the ground is not frozen yet and invite some of our neighbors over to help. 
and then we will all build the well together. After finishing his sentence, Zhang Kai continued to weave the basket in his hand. Hearing his father's answer, Zhang Xiaohua's mind, finally, calmed down, and the whole family continued on with the work in their hands. After a while, Zhang Xiaohua's fatigue grew heavier and more noticeable. His eyes turned unfocused, feeling heartbroken. Gor Sufei ordered him to bed, and Zhang Xiaohua agreed, walking woodenly towards the sleeping platform, which the three brothers shared, threw himself onto the old and tattered quilt before falling into a deep sleep. Without noticing that his mother has personally applied some ointment onto his hands, several days were spent busily like that. For the next few days, Zhang Xiaohua continued to be patient and worked wholeheartedly on his land to make it smoother. Without sparing a thought on the problem of the scarcity of water, on this evening, Zhang Xiaohua had finally cleared the rest of the weeds, patted the large rocks into finer soil, and was preparing to pack up and head home. Looking at the field of land that he had poured his effort into being almost ready for crop cultivation and having only the step of loosening the soil left, Zhang Xiaohua finally lost his patience and turned around towards the back of the field where the would-be well was located. After he turned around, he noticed that there were a few wooden planks already in place at the pit. Zhang Xiaohua hurriedly ran over to take a clearer look. Indeed, there was already a round platform at the bottom of the pit with some wooden boards affixed in a circle and six long wooden poles inserted. Into the bottom, Zhang was so happy that he almost jumped, and he trotted down the slope to take an even closer look when he reached. Zhang Xiaohua could not keep his hands to himself and started feeling out the wooden fixtures. Wondering in his heart how they could help to deepen the pit, just as he was thinking about the problem, someone from above called out Xiaohua, where are you? Hearing his second brother Xiaohu's voice. Xiaohua hurriedly replied, I am here, come quick second. Brother, we are opening the well soon. Zhang Xiaohu also slid down and pulled Zhang Xiaohua's arm, it's okay, I already knew that. It was me and eldest brother who helped to transport the wooden boards over after morning, eldest. Brother said that he wanted to give you a surprise, so we did not tell you in advance. Right now, our parents are waiting for you to get back, so let's hurry home now. The two brothers then jogged home. Dinner was already prepared at home on the dining table, and both father and eldest brother were seated around it. However, no one else was around, so Zhang Xiaohua asked father, Where are the people who will be helping out with the well construction? Zhang Kai laughed, They have already gone back. We do not have much money, so I have only agreed to provide lunch for them. Dinner would be self-provided. Furthermore, everyone has their own land to farm, and we can also save some money this way. Zhang Xiaohua grunted in understanding and went to help his mother with the rest of the dinner's preparation. After the meal, Zhang Kai handed out tasks to all members of the family. The three Zhang brothers naturally have to help out with the well construction directly. While Xiaohua's mother will be in charge of preparing and delivering the meals, Zhang Kai will be buying the required materials, as well as to find more manpower. In short, everyone in the family apart from Xiaohua's grandmother had a part to play in the construction project. Naturally, grandmother will be looking after the house during this time, and feeding the chickens itself can be considered a chore in the first morning hour. Jean Xiaohua has already gotten out of bed and was rushing his other two brothers who were still sleeping on the shared platform to wake up. Jean Xiaohua's mother insisted that they grab a bite before leaving, saying that although their father has already left earlier, there was no point leaving earlier if there would be no one else at the well. Zhang Xiaohua had no choice but to eat his breakfast patiently before heading towards the knoll, when the sun was high up in the sky, when they reached. There were already several people who were busy at work, Zhang Kai motioned them to come over and help dig up some of the larger rocks, and to move them aside. As such, everyone enthusiastically performed their duties, just as the well construction continued over the next few days. Zhang Xiaohua realized that digging a well was not a very complex project, it was the simple matter of finding a spot and using the wooden structure to go down the hole dig deeper. The only difficulty lies in finding the right spot which would not cause any ground instability. And this was something that could only be learned through experience. The wooden structure was also necessary. Otherwise, as the hole gets deeper, how would they be able to transport the earth away? And how could the people digging at the bottom of the well come back up? Again, fortunately, about the position of the well. Zhang Kai was quite lucky because the expert he consulted said that a water vein was likely to be located near the would-be farm. 
He added that if they were successful in digging up a functional well, then the water would be as sweet as the mountain springs, and using it to water the crops would even be too wasteful for it could be used for their own consumption instead. Hearing those words, Zhang Kai snorted, because it was infeasible, too. Carry the water all the way home just to cook rice, the days of well digging just passed like that, just that as the well grew deeper, the difficulty increased and the progress slowed down. This is due to several hard rocks in the deeper parts of the earth. Fortunately, there was no vast space of bedrock, otherwise, there would be no way to go around it and the well project would have to be discontinued, as more days passed. Perhaps Zhang Kai's lucky streak has ended, because he finally met with a large obstacle. On this afternoon, Zhang Xiaohua was striking the earth heavily with his hoe, before realizing that he has struck onto something exceptionally hard, causing his hands to become numb. From his experience, Xiao Hua automatically moved to another spot to try and dig up the rock, but Dang tilled it was obvious that he was still within the circumference of that hard rock. Zhang Xiao Hua could not help but worry. And he went around to different spots to try his luck. However, without any exception, all spots that he struck his hoe onto were part of the same rock. Tucking on the rope around his waist, he signaled to the people above to pull him up. And with a downcast face, informed his father on his recent discovery. Zhang Kai and the other workers also took turns to go down, and came up soon after, without much words, everyone started to discuss seriously, while taking turns to have their lunch. To debate on whether the rock they struck was bedrock or a large piece of rock, soon after, everyone scattered leaving Zhang Xiaohua who was looking at the unfinished well, his heart filled with unease, if it was truly a layer of bedrock, then there would be no way to dig around it. Meaning that the several days of hard effort would be for naught. Zhang Xiaohua asked Zhang Xiaolong to lower him down to the bottom of the well again, and this time, his heart was full of resolve. <laughs> Legend of the Cultivation God, Chapter Minus 3, Bracelet By this time, the sun was hanging in the middle of the sky, however, because the well was already very deep. Nothing was visible and the diggers had to use a small oil lamp to see inside the well. Under the swaying lamplight, Zhang Xiaohua's uncertain face appeared to be deep in thought. Picking up his hoe again, he started digging on another area. Dang. Dang, the sound was persistent even after switching locations a few times. Perhaps. They have truly reached a dead end. The thought of giving up sprouted in Zhang Xiaohua's mind, but he eventually decided to go up to clear his thoughts first. The circumference of the well could be expanded first before they truly decide to give up. The project. Although it was midday, his mother has not arrived with the lunch yet, so there was no harm trying a little more. After some pondering, Zhang Xiaohua made up his mind to continue. And thus, he walked over towards an area that was waste. Deep from the ground to try his luck, after digging for a while, another bam sound was produced. Xiaohua was shocked, could it be another large rock, however? As he continued to strike the ground with his hoe, there was no longer that sound be. Produced by his successive digs, Zhang Xiaohua thought that perhaps he had hit a small stone and hence, he continued to dig while fearfully dreading the sound of striking hard earth, unfortunately. There was no consolation after his hard efforts. Because on that spot, he finally reached the same piece of rock, just as Zhang Xiaohua stopped digging to rest for a while before picking out another location. Zhang Xiaolong's voice echoed from above, Xiaohua, hurry and come up for a break, mother has brought lunch over. Then, Zhang Xiaohua was pulled up by his eldest brother, who upon seeing the grimace on his face, wordlessly handed over his lunch. Seeing Xiaohua swallow his food in large bites, he comforted his youngest brother. It is. Okay, Xiaohua, if this place is unsuitable to build a well, we can always change the location. These hills are so vast, surely there is a place from which we can construct a well from. After eating his fill, Zhang Xiaohua's mood improved considerably and his face was no longer as dark. Seeing the other workers head downwards towards the well, he smiled towards Zhang Xiaolong, I know, big brother, I will go up and look around. And we'll come back in a while. Zhang Xiaolong patted. Zhang Xiao was back, and without saying anything else, he took the bamboo basket away, using his hoe as support. Zhang Xiaohua climbed up the slope back into the plot of field which he has been working on. It has finally began to form some resemblance to an actual farm field, putting his hoe aside and planting his butt on the ground, Zhang Xiaohua looked blankly at the plot of land, wondering if he had to transport water from the river to irrigate his crops in the future, as his eyes spread over to the hoe, 
he noticed that there was a clump of soil stuck onto its tip probably from previously when he was digging. Zhang Xiaohua used his feet to step on the clump, but he was unable to sweep it off. He picked up the hoe and turned it around to look at the hoe head more closely, before realizing that there was something round which was stuck, scratching his head. Zhang Xiaohua figured that it was probably the object that caused the band sound previously. No. Wonder the sound went away as soon as it appeared. Zhang Xiaohua picked up a tree branch to remove the round thing from the hoe tip. He tried knocking it onto a piece of rock, but it was still stuck firmly. If he were to smash the hoe onto a large piece of rock, while it might get the object off, the object might be broken as a result of the collision. Nevertheless, he could not carry such an object while digging the earth. Hence, Zhang Xiaohua made up his mind and smashed his hoe onto a rock with half his strength. Despite hearing the band sound, the object did not break, but neither did it dislodge itself from the hoe, even when Zhang Xiaohua adjusted his strength to his fullest abilities. But the object still did not break. Fortunately, it finally fell off, and it could be seen that the object was very sturdy. Zhang Xiaohua picked up the circular object, using his shirt to wipe off the mud for a closer inspection. He realized that it could be a bracelet. The object was round to cun wide, completely black in color, dull in appearance, and made from some unknown material. Just as Zhang Xiaohua picked up the object for a closer look, he heard Zhang Jilong shout from down slope, Xiaohua, come over quickly, there is some hope now, upon hearing. So, Zhang Xiaohua was elated and he sped down the slope, without sparing any attention on the bracelet that he had just picked up. Instead, he pocketed it somewhere convenient, picked up his hoe. And thus, he did not notice the gentle sensation spreading through his body after he held the object. When Zhang Xiaohua reached down slope, he saw Zhang Jialong and Zhang Xiaohu's delighted faces, as well as Zhang Kai's slightly bitter expression. Hearing Zhang Xiaolong's explanation, he learned that the hard surface was not a layer of bedrock, but rather a piece of hard rock that was not too large to be excavated, as long as they enlarged the circumference of the well. It would be possible to carry the stone up, however, more manpower was also required to enlarge the well, and the time taken to complete the project will also be extended, so the project will be more expensive, at least. They would not have to restart their efforts on another location. Nor must Zhang Xiaohua carry water from the village river to irrigate the land. Seeing the bright expressions on the faces of his three sons, only Zhang Kai felt some worry in his heart. As he hoped that such an obstacle to be a one-off event, if not, this well project will have to be abandoned. The workload in the afternoon was naturally much lighter. The people digging the well re-measured the required diameter for the mouth in order to excavate the rock successfully. After finding a solution, everyone continued on their work. Methodologically, after returning home at night and finishing his dinner, before he climbed onto the sleeping platform, the bracelet in his pockets never crossed Zhang Xiaohu's mind. Only after stripping off his clothes and seeing it fall off was he reminded of the earlier events. However, Xiaohua was too tired after a laborious day of work, so he simply slipped it under his pillow and went into a deep slumber. There was nothing was unordinary on that particular night. The flame in the oil lamp has perished long ago, the wind blew and shook the fence gate, and the dried grass on the yellow mud walls were blown and shaken. The only light came from the moon in the sky, and it shone through the open window into the rooms, onto the quilts, revealing a household whose members are all in deep slumber. Throughout the quiet night, the wind-blowing sounds were the only thing that broke the silence. The only thing that set this night apart from the usual ones was Zhang Xiaohua, or more. Precisely, his dream, his dream was no longer about five spiced meat, but rather, it was full of eye-dazzling light. The lights were just blinking and swirling around as though it was breathing. Early in the morning, just as the first rays of the sun shone onto Zhang Xiaohua's face, Zhang Xiaohua opened his eyes. He looked at his surroundings with uncertainty, but did not spot any shiny object around, and then realized that all the brilliant lights he thought he saw were part of his dream. Shaking his head self-deprecatingly, he tried to go back to sleep, however, he soon realized that all he could concentrate upon was the breathing sounds of his brothers. And instead of feeling sleepy, his mind was wide awake, left with no other choice. He got out the bed and changed out of his clothes. As Zhang Xiaohua walked onto the courtyard, he noticed his mother in the middle preparing some breakfast on the stove. So he went to the well at the side of the fence to draw water to wash. Up, seeing Zhang Xiaohua walked out, Gur Sufei asked, 
What is the matter, Xiaohua? After the hard day of work yesterday, you should sleep a bit more before continuing the work later today. As he drew the water, Zhang Xiaohua replied, I am not sleepy anymore, mother, I am not tired, and as you can see, I have fully regained my energy, and my body is at top condition now, with one strike of the hoe. I will be able to shatter that large rock into pieces. After saying so, he put the pail down and did some movements of hoeing in the air. Gor Sufei laughed. All right, Xiaohui is a good boy. Xiaohua has grown into a big man like his father and will soon be able to support the family. Zhang Xiaohua reddened and replied, Mom, I am already big enough. Stop praising me like that. It is embarrassing. At that moment, Zhang Kai returned from outside carrying vegetables in his hands and asked, who has already grown up, Xiao Hua. Why are you awake so early? Go and sleep a little. Longer then, he passed the vegetables to Zhang Xiao Hua's mother and said, the vegetable garden has some weeds growing. You have to start weeding the garden if you have the time. Even though we are all busy with the well construction, we should not neglect the vegetable garden. As Gu Sufei took the vegetables, she replied, we are talking about your youngest son for being able to wake so early today. He is sure to be an energetic helper later. Then, she continued to make breakfast for the family, and Zhang Kai went back into the house. After washing up, Zhang Xiaohua no longer had any reason to stay in the courtyard, so he went out for a walk, even though it was still early. Winter was approaching soon. All the farmers were restless. During this period, so there were already many people walking about in the village, some of the people were chasing the ducks and geese towards the river. Some were harvesting grass to feed the chickens and pigs, and others had already picked up their hoes and were preparing to toil in the fields again. Zhang Xiaohua walked along the small road in the village, feeling something different today that sets it apart from the rest. Yet he was unable to put a finger onto it. He just felt energetic, as though he had limitless energy, and his whole body is bursting with vitality. However, he would not wonder too much, and simply attributed it to a good night's sleep. As he walked into the house, everyone was already having their breakfast, thus, he hurriedly ate, and then followed his father and elder brothers towards the well. The following days were peaceful. As the well was widened and the large stone was finally extracted from the bottom of it, the well was also becoming deeper. The large stone which was extracted had an even surface and was cool to the touch, so Jean Xiaohua asked his brothers to shift it into under the shade of a tree beside his field so he could use it as a resting area in the summer. As for the bracelet, it was long forgotten under the pillow, except that Zhang Xiaohua's dreams of five-spiced meat were now replaced with the shining bright lights, not that he paid any attention to it. Another few days passed, but the well still did not produce any water, which led Zhang Kai to feel slightly irritated, seeing that winter was closing in, and the ground was about to freeze, even though the groundwater would not freeze there would still be increased difficulty in digging up the well on that night, after the family had their dinner and gathered around to do the other mundane tasks. John Kai wrinkled his brows and discussed with Gur Sufei that if the water still did not appear in the well, then they would have to stop all work and wait for spring to arrive. At this moment, Gur Sufei said, Hobby, did you know that Mr. Wu from the neighboring village was also planning a farm field in the hills at the south? Zhang Kai replied, no I do not, but I did hear that there was another well construction project going on in that area. Gor Sufei continued, that project was indeed initiated by Mr. Wu, who like us, planned to use it to irrigate his field. When I went to the riverside to pluck grass for the chickens, I met Gor Kwan from the household at the village entrance. Her little aunt was married to Mr. Wu's brother, and guess what she told me? What did she say? Could it be that their well already had water? Zhang Kai inquired. Didn't they begin later then? U.S., how could they have succeeded so soon? Is water the only thing on your mind? This is something much more important, Gor Sufei said exasperatedly. I, what happened then? Not only was Zhang Kai hooked, the three Zhang brothers also grew. Curious, as they dug up the well, they discovered an old container, Gor Sufei continued, when the container was excavated out, and the lock broken with a hoe to reveal its contents. Even though the interior were covered in mud, but it was evident that the contents were precious, we sure are unfortunate, don't you think, even though we began earlier than them, all we had so far was a useless piece of rock. Just as the family was enraptured with story of Mr. Wu striking rich, Zhang Xiaohua, then remembered that he had also dug something out, excitedly, he said, Dad, Mom, I also dug out a treasure from our well, under the curious and excited eyes of his family. 
He took out the long-forgotten bracelet from under his pillow. Zhang Kai received the bracelet from Zhang Xiaohua and placed it under the oil lamp for a closer inspection, but all he saw was a black, dull thing made from some unknown material. It was closer to a scrap metal hook than a bracelet, not knowing what it actually was, he handed it over to Guo Sufei, who took it over and observed it with her hands, using her fingers to scratch on it for a while, she said, it feels too light to be made of jade. And there are no patterns, so rather than a decorative item, it seems to be a child's toy. Here Xia Hua, you can take it back to play. Xia Hua dejectedly took back the bracelet before passed it to his two elder brothers. As though not being able to dig up any treasure was his fault, the two brothers twirled the bracelet around their hands before returning it to Xia Hua. Seeing that nobody was interested in this artifact, Xia Hua had no choice but to put it back into his pocket. Gur Sufei then continued, Sigh, if this was a truly precious item, then we could consider storing it to use as your eldest brother's betrothal gift. After saying it out, the whole family's interest was sparked again, when summer arrives. Zhang Zhaolong would have reached a full 20 years, and it would be the time for him to find a young lady. One by one, the family started to describe an ideal bride for Zhang Zhaolong, when the oil lamp finally extinguished. Everyone was still in the middle of conversation, but remembering that there was well construction and farm work the next day, they went back to their platforms to sleep. Before sleeping, just as Zhang Xiaohua was about to put the bracelet back to under his pillow, a moment of hesitation turned his mind around. Mr. Wu has his treasure which he dug from the ground, and I to have my own. I should also cherish this treasure of mine. Having thought so, he noticed that the bracelet fit snugly on his hand. He tried waving his hand about, but it still stayed on. Zhang Xiaohua felt joy in his heart, this bracelet seemed to be tailored to his size, even after falling asleep, he did not realize that if the bracelet fitted so well on his hands, then how could he have slipped it on in the beginning, needless to mention, his five spiced meat dreams were now a thing of the past, only the bright lights appeared in his dreams. Legend of the Cultivation God, Chapter Minus Four the new year for the next few days, Zhang Kai and his family continued to work on the construction of the well. Fortunately, on the sixth day, the water that everyone was hoping to see finally appeared. At the last moment, they managed to build the well right before winter, which could be considered a huge accomplishment. Everyone felt relief in their hearts. While Zhang Kai was busy handing out the remuneration to the fellow workers, Zhang Zhaolong and his two brothers were busy tidying up the road from the field to the well. The gloomy winter clouds were now overcast in the sky and little bean-sized snow started to fall. Signaling the start of winter, the first snowstorm began to fall, and the cold winter wind became even colder, which also meant that the new year was arriving soon. Zhang Kai was very pleased with the accomplishments of the past year. His family now had an additional plot of land with its own well. The grains produced by this field could be stored as rations in the case of a drought. Therefore, on the upcoming new year, he asked Gur Sufei to prepare some New Year specialties so that everyone could enjoy the upcoming celebrations to the fullest. His mother-in-law was already very old, so her living to see another year was a cause to be happy for. However, her body has also gotten worse over the past few days, and she had to lie in bed during half the day. Whether she could live through another year was still uncertain. When he thought of his parents and his recently deceased father-in-law, Zhang Kai's grew even more determined to celebrate and enjoy the impending new year. Farmers do not celebrate the new year very extravagantly. They would usually prepare a few more dishes and prepare the food in larger portions. As for the new year specialty goods, they were simply the sundries that Zhang Kai bought from a market outside the village. He had also purchased a few foodstuffs that were not usually found at home, which the three brothers gazed at enviously hoping to sneak an early taste apart from settling the matters of the New Year celebration. Gur Sufei also went around the village to meet their relatives on matters relating to her eldest son's marriage. However, from the ever-changing mood on her face, it was evident that those matters were not going as smoothly as she hoped. Time seemed to pass faster in the bustle of the Zhang household, and before long, the New Year finally arrived on New Year Eve. As the whole family gathered around the stove discussing about the events of the previous year, as well as Zhang Xiaolong's approaching marriage, a sudden shout could be heard from outside the village. A large commotion seemed to be stirring outside. Could the bandits have come? A sudden worrying thought struck past Zhang Kai's head. However, 
This was unlikely to be the case because the households among the villages in the area were all very poor. Thus, the nearby bandit stronghold had no reason to come to a place where even the birds would not leave their droppings at. Even though Zhang Kai thought that way, he dared not let his guard down. Thus, he called his three sons to carry their hoes and any other metal objects. As they walked out of this house carefully, the fence surrounding the Zhang's courtyard was only as high as half a person's height. So they could immediately spot the current situation in the village. In the village, there were many people who have gathered into large discussion groups. There were also people who were sprinting about, but none of these people were familiar faces. Despite the fright that was visible on everyone's faces, there were also hints of excitement. Assessing the current situation, Zhang Kai called his children back into the house and ordered them to put away their weapons while he went out alone to fish for more news. The three brothers were naturally not willing to stay behind, so they stealthily left the house and went to gather information from the similar age peers. There were many people out in the village standing or sitting in small groups, all discussing about the same topic. Zhang Kai walked towards one such group who were carrying pipes and pushed his way to the middle until he saw the familiar face of blacksmith Liu patting his shoulders. Zhang Kai asked, Old Liu, what is happening? Why is there such a large commotion outside? Blacksmith Liu quietly smoked his pipe, and on seeing that it was Zhang Kai who asked, he tapped the pipe a few times, put on a fresh patch of grass, and then inhaled deeply. Old brother, did you know that north of our village is the stronghold of the Shikui Mountain Bandits? Zhang Kai replied, of course I do. They are the largest bandit group within these hundreds of Li. How could I have not heard of them? However, they would usually target the more affluent areas in the north. Why would they come over to this side? Blacksmith Liu took another smoke on his pipe and replied, True, but do you remember that not long ago, Mr. Wu from the Xin village dug up a container of valuables? Zhang Kai felt like the light has finally dawned on him. Could it be that he did not dare probe any further as he realized the reason for the bandit's attack? Wealth should be kept hidden. Otherwise, what positive outcome could arise when bandits have set their sights on your wealth? Seeing that Zhang Kai remained silent, Butcher Gur, who was on the side, squeezed over and mysteriously said, Furthermore, Mr. Wu initially feigned ignorance, which piqued the fury of the bandit leader who immediately held the tens of people in the household as hostages at the shrine. Before sending some of his men to overturn the house, finally, they found a pile of treasure at the bottom of the vegetable cellar and feeling deceived. They massacred all the hostages before burning down the shrine. Fortunately, even though Shin, Village is slightly larger than us, they also live in impoverished conditions. So the bandits did not continue their plundering and instead warned the rest of villagers not to report the matter to the authorities, or they would soon follow the Wu. Family blacksmith Liu said, disaster disguised as a blessing indeed. A few days ago they were still thinking that they have struck rich, but now, they all perished under a calamity. What a waste butcher gore continued, not every member perished. Though Mr. Wu's younger brother's wife went back to our village to visit her parents and has yet to return today, so she managed to avoid the calamity earlier on. If not for someone spreading the news over, she would still be kept in the dark. Furthermore, the person who spread the news over also said that before the mountain bandits left, they tied a girl onto a horse, and although her face was not visible, it is most likely to be Mr. Wu's daughter whom they brought back up into the mountain. The three Zhang brothers who were standing behind their father suddenly felt chill after hearing the news from the villagers. Even though they have heard of the atrocities by these bandits, but those were just hearsay, now. That a tragedy has fallen unto someone close to them, as Mr. Wu was one of the few learned people who taught Zhang Xiaohua, even though he did not see it with his own eyes. Zhang Xiaohua felt fear and grief pervade his heart, subconsciously, he rubbed the bracelet on his arm, thinking, Luckily the thing I dug out was not a real treasure. Even if it was so, I must definitely not tell anyone to prevent disaster befalling on me and my family. It was how the idea of every man for himself imprinted itself onto the young boy's heart. The three brothers told their father that they wanted to personally go over to Shin village to scout the situation, but Zhang Chai refused their request. After all, New Year was approaching and it was inauspicious to see bloodshed or misfortune. Furthermore, the Wu family house has probably reduced to a pile of mud and debris by now, and the scene would be quite traumatic. Not to mention that the authorities have probably arrived, and going over would invite interrogation from them. As the discussion died down, 
the villagers eventually scattered back to their homes, no matter what happened. Their personal affairs are more important than other people's business, sweeping the snow from their doorsteps was a superstition that even farmers follow to avoid such a calamity falling on them as Zhang Kai and the three brothers returned home. They saw their grandmother and Gur Sufei huddle around the stove fire, then they recounted the news to both of their shock. Both women then prayed to the heavens so that the deceased could be reincarnated sooner and that their own family would not experience such a tragedy. Even after the sky turned dark and the oil lamp in the middle of the house was lit, Zhang Xiaohua's grandmother was still crying out, disaster disguised as a blessing, disaster disguised as a blessing indeed, even though the new year has returned. The Gore village atmosphere was not as vibrant as the previous years, under the dark night. Sky, only the innocent children were carrying their lanterns and playing around, because only they could preserve their naivety in the face of human cruelty. Most of the villagers were like the Zhang household, they enjoyed a sumptuous dinner to pack away the previous year worth of weariness and to welcome for a better, more comfortable future ahead, but at the back of their heads, they could not forget the unfortunate incident of the Wu family. Thinking that in this dog-eat-dog -dog world, it is difficult to avoid the mentality of putting oneself before others and to hope for self-protection in such a bleak environment. The new year which should have been lively and exciting just passed quietly that way, whether or not there was joy. Sorrow, rewards or pain in the dreams of other people, Jean Chauhua had the same dream of the bright lights again. The way farmers celebrate the new year was actually pretty simple. Apart from visiting each other's houses, they would also visit the distant Lu Town Town Fair. Every New Year Day, the Lu Town has a street that would be bustling with people and liveliness. Everyone would be dressed in their new clothes. While bringing along a full pouch to enjoy the atmosphere of the new year. Festivities, for the Zhang household, Gor Sufei had to stay at home to look after Zhang Xiaohua's grandmother, so Zhang Kai brought his three sons to the Lu Town instead. Lu Town was about 30 li south of Gor village, there were not many streets. In the town of Lu and there would not be as much excitement on normal days, it was not difficult to rally the people during the new year. Everyone was more than willing to spend a year's accumulated worth of energy to squeeze among the crowds in the streets. There was a road that stretches from the north to the south, and it was slightly larger than the other streets. There were also many stores opened on both sides of the road. No matter what they were selling, business appeared to be extremely good. Apart from the stores, there were several vendors who set up their stalls outside these stores, hawking their wares loudly and lugging customers over on normal days. If the store owners were to see such street vendors, then they would chase these people away without hesitation. However, today was a special occasion as everyone was seeking to enjoy the liveliness and nobody would commit an inauspicious act of spoiling the atmosphere. Because of this, the street which was not very wide to begin with became even more crowded and for the three brothers who were following their father, their eyes were all over the place not knowing where to start. To start. To start. Legend of the Cultivation God, Chapter Minus 5 Act of Courage It was not Zhang Xiaohua's first time participating in Lu Town's New Year celebration. It was after all the most crowded place in several Li during this period of every year. And from as far as he could remember, he had always came here during the new year. However, the only memories he had during those years were of candy sellers, snack sellers, and nothing else. He had even cleanly forgotten about how crowded it would be, or perhaps he thought that squeezing among the crowd was another game at that time, this time, as he was standing at the north entrance of the street looking towards the crowd and store goods and novelties and stalls. Zhang Xiaohua regretted that he had not enough eyes to enjoy the sights of his surroundings. The family of Zhang followed the flow of the crowd as they slowly moved from the north entrance towards the middle. Every time they passed by a store, they would want to squeeze into the store, regardless of its merchandise, no matter if it was silk, antiques, or even medicine, they wanted to stop to take a look. The three brothers did not come just to window shop. There were more people here than they could ever see in their village, and everyone was dressed to the nines, so the brothers' attention was drawn towards the especially pretty ladies. It was a pity that the three brothers had ordinary looks, and their clothes were simple. So whenever the ladies passed them, their sights would glaze over them and they not bother to spare the brothers any attention. Nevertheless, there were some ladies who could feel the particularly fiery gaze from these brothers, and would either move away immediately from shyness, or glare back at 
the brothers until the brothers felt embarrassed and looked away, while Zhang Xiaohua was looking mostly at the novel things which he had had ignored in the past. Zhang Jialong and Shang Xiaohua were searching for the sake of their futures, they were hoping to meet an agreeable young lady that day, but it was apparent that most of the ladies would not spare them any attention. In the middle of the street was a large store with a signboard, rich people's clothes affixed to it. Upon seeing the signboard, Zhang Kai's eyes brightened and he called out the three brothers to follow while entered the store. The attendant at the door immediately walked up to welcome him. Dear guest, may I know what are you looking for? Not seeming to mind Zhang Kai's old clothes or shabby appearance, when Zhang Kai entered the store, he did not walk straight to the counter but stood by the door and looked at the crowd of male and female guests bustling around, not knowing how to proceed, he recalled himself on hearing the store attendant's greetings, and said, I wish to get my children some clothes, and buy some clothes for their mother too. Just as he replied, the three brothers walked in. And as it was not often that they would enter a such store, they felt unsure of how to behave or to perform a purchase. The store attendant overlooked their apparent discomfort and smiled. Would these guests like to come over to see if there is anything to their liking? After saying so, he lead them to a counter at the corner and presented to them the clothes on display. There were fewer people in this counter than most others, having only two groups. The first group being two young ladies deciding among some colors and the second a family of three who have already selected their purchase while another attendant helped to wrap it up. Apart from this counter, there were many bright and colorful clothes of clearly better quality displayed around the shop, with well-dressed customers. Standing aside pointing towards the merchandise which caught their eyes, it seemed that the store attendant had been trained well to attend to the needs of their customers. Upon looking at the Zhang household he could ascertain that they were looking for durable cloths over the more fanciful materials, even though the attendant had brought Zhang Kai to the appropriate place. There was a look for dismay on Zhang Kai's face because on the previous occasions, it was the children's mother who made the decisions, but since she was home taking care of their grandmother today, Zhang Kai was at a loss on which he should pick, seeing the look on his father's face. Zhang Xiao who quickly went up and said to the attendants, we shall look around ourselves, you can attend to other customers first. After the store attendant left, Zhang Kai admitted, look at my foolishness. I did not ask your mother before we left on what are the types of cloth to buy. It seems that we will have to go home empty-handed for today's trip. Coincidentally, the taller of the two ladies, who was walking past Zhang Jialong while carrying a navy-colored cloth, overheard Zhang Kai's confession. And she walked back to her companion and signaled a look towards Zhang Jialong before approaching Zhang Kai saying, Excuse me, mister, I would like to discuss a matter with you. Feeling confused, Zhang Kai replied, what is the matter, lady? The taller lady replied, Mr. I was planning to pick a set of clothes for my elder brother who is not here today. Since this young master is of similar build, would it be okay if he helps us try on the clothes? I just overheard you say that you were facing difficulties choosing the appropriate clothes. In return, my sister and I can assist you to pick out some appropriate choices. Zhang Kai was overjoyed and he agreed immediately, thus... Zhang Xiaolong ended up trying on several sets of clothes for the ladies. While Zhang Kai was also very satisfied, because even the store attendant commented that the ladies had a really good eye. The only regret was that after the store attendants wrapped the ladies' purchase, the ladies left immediately, so he did not have the chance to ask for their names. Zhang Xiaolong carried the cloth looking slightly depressed as he walked behind Zhang Kai out of the shop, but as he was about to enter the store across the street which sold farming tools. The sounds of drums and gongs suddenly arose. On hearing the sounds playing, Zhang Xiaohua jumped excitedly. Dad, come quickly. The show is beginning so let's head over there. Just as Zhang Xiaohua shouted. A large group of people also went and squeezed towards the sound of the gongs. Zhang Kai then hurriedly called Jialong and Xiaohu to follow the flow of the crowd. Lu Town has a New Year tradition of erecting a stage platform at the New Year Bazaar. With performances being held daily until the bazaar closes, to the farming households who could not enjoy such entertainment often, this was another important event in the new year which they look forward to, so it was no wonder that Xiao Hua was so excited. The performance began just as the Zhang household reached the stage. There were three lines of the audience so it was fortunate that the stage was high enough for the people behind to watch the performance, even though there were many people in the audience. 
It could not match to the number of people still bustling around in the stores. A popular folk story was being staged, and the audience were enraptured in the performance, while Jean Jalong being no exception, as he gradually forgot his earlier regret. Just as everyone was watching the performance, an argument suddenly broke out on the other side of the stage, and although it was loud, there were many people around the stage so most could not hear the specifics, however, Jean Xiaohua could hear the argument. And he felt as though he could recognize the voice of the lady. Perhaps she was one of their fellow village members. Coincidentally, there was a tree nearby, so Jean Xiaohua climbed up to take a look at the commotion. He was able to recognize the lady in a glance. He then shouted towards Jean Jialong. Eldest brother, it is the lady who previously helped us pick the clothes. She seems to be in trouble. Upon hearing that, Zhang Xiaolong squeezed through the crowd immediately. Even before consulting with his father, while Zhang Kai pulled Zhang Xiaohu's hands while calling Zhang Xiaohua to come down from the tree and follow him, after squeezing through the crowd with many difficulties. Zhang Xiaolong reached the other side of the stage, and the scene immediately made his blood boil. The Stage platform was supported by tall pillars, and there were two pitiable ladies huddling each other at the bottom of the pillars, their faces were red. And they were holding a small package which seemed to be the clothes that they bought earlier. Standing before them were two short and fat men holding fans and dressed in luxurious clothes, muttering something while appearing to bully the ladies. Around the two fat men were seven to eight men servants with large sturdy bodies dressed in coarse attire, forcing the performance spectators to make way for them among these fiercely built men servants. Some had mocking expressions on their faces as they looked on at their young master's despicable behavior, while the rest were glaring back at the crowd as if to challenge anyone to come forward and intervene on the ladies' behalf, even though there seemed to be people with the intention to help. They were deterred by these goons and thus could only watch from the side. When Zhang Jialong rushed over and saw the current state of events, just as he was thinking of how to react, Upon seeing the pleading eyes of the taller lady, even though the glance was not directed at him, he lost track of his thoughts and rushed forward. At this moment, Zhang Xiaolong was held back from behind, and when he turned around, he realized that his family has already caught up, and Zhang Kai was holding on to his wrist. Zhang Xiaolong frantically pleaded. Dad Zhang Kai said softly, Xiaolong, do not be rash. The few of us are no a match for these people. Zhang Xiaolong replied, but if we do not help them, these two ladies are going to be bullied, Zhang Xiaohua also quipped. That is right, Dad, those two ladies even helped us earlier. Zhang Kai then said, it is right to help others in need, but we should also know when to step back if we are unable to alleviate the situation and instead land ourselves in trouble. Look at the man in black who is carrying such a large blade. The three Zhang brothers looked over at the direction where their father pointed out, and there was indeed a muscular man servant in black, his hands crossed over his chest while holding a large blade. Leaning against a tree and squinting his eyes as, though he was sleeping, he appeared to be the two bullies' bodyguard, it also seemed that he was the main deterring factor for why most spectators are unwilling to intervene. However, with no solution at hand, Zhang Xiaolong began to turn frantic. Just as Zhang Xiaolong was hesitating, the scuffle at the tall pillars became even more severe as the two short and fat young masters had managed to pry the two ladies away from each other and were about to drag the ladies to a corner ally, Zhang. Xiaolong could no longer contain his worries as he shrugged off Zhang Kai's hands with great strength. Those rotten goons had already thought that they had scared off the bystanders and were already in. Anticipating a good show to watch, thus, they did not expect anyone to rush out so suddenly. When Jean Xiaolong reached the sides of the two village girls, he pulled them by their arms towards him. Breaking off the grip of the two short and fat young masters whose strength could not compare, and shouted, What do you think you are doing? Seeing their prey escaped from their hands, their faces turned red with rage as they glanced towards each other, before the young master in orange said, We are not doing anything. Who are you? And what do you want? Jean Xiaolong froze for a moment, and then said, I am their cousin. Why are you pulling them? Aren't you afraid if I report this to the authorities? The young master in black laughed. Report to the authorities? Sure, let us go together. In Lu Town, this young master represents the authorities. Your cousin just stepped on my shoes, so I wanted her to compensate me. I just want to see on which side the authorities are going to stand by at this moment. Zhang Kai and the rest managed to rush over. Zhang Kai immediately bowed towards the two men and smiled obligingly. Dear young masters, 
Please be appeased. These two girls of mine are still insensible. Look at your shoes. We will pay for them, since today is such an important day for celebration. Please be magnanimous and spare us. A good deed will always be repaid in kind. The young master in orange laughed. Well said. It seems that this old fogey knows what to do. I will stave off my hands, so you can just compensate me for this pair of shoes. Zhang Kai felt wary in his heart, and asked carefully, would this young master kindly tell me how much should I compensate? The young master in orange raised his arm and extended his palm. Zhang Kai then sighed in. Relief, I see, so it is five coins, I will pay them right now. Zhang Kai then took out five copper coins from his breast. But the man in orange did not bother to look at the coins and slap them onto the floor. Berating, you old country fogey. Do you think that my shoes are the same as your straw slippers and are worth only five copper coins? Listen carefully, I want five pieces of silvers. Zhang Kai's heart flipped. And immediately smiled apologetically, young master, you must be joking. My household annual expenses are even less than three silvers. How could these shoes cost that much? The young master in black replied, you old fogey. Are you suspecting our sincere honest words? At that moment, the two village girls behind Zhang Xiaolong regained their courage and stuck their heads out from behind Zhang Xiaolong's back. Dear uncle, we have been maligned. We did not step on their shoes. We just arrived to watch the performance, but before we could do so, these men surrounded us for no reason. Zhang Xiaolong also said angrily, Father, these men are obviously out to coerce us. I think it is better to bring these ladies to the authorities to protect them. The young master in black laughed heartily. You, country bumpkins have not recognized enough of the world. You do not even recognize this great Uncle Zhao in front of you, or else why would you mention about some little authority, men? Come over and teach them who the authorities are, with a wave. Of this Zhao young master hand, the men servants who were originally looking from aside started to walk over while rubbing their fists menacingly, seeing that situation had turned sour. Zhang Kai said to Zhang Xiaohua, bring these two ladies, too. Escape, the three of us will stay here to stall them. After finishing his words, he led Zhang Jialong and Zhang Xiaohu to face against these men's servants. While Zhang Xiaohua also pulled the two ladies and head towards the crowd, despite being famous, who do manual labor every day and are able to face off these men's servants on on one, Zhang Kai, Zhang Xiaolong and Zhang Xiaohu were currently outnumbered, and after a few rounds of struggling, they were thrown onto the floor and subjected to a flurry. Of kicks and punches, Zhang Xiaohua saw his father and brothers got hurt in front of his eyes, and just as they were to run off into the crowd, they were unexpectedly blocked by the bodyguard until the other men's servants caught up. Finally, Zhang Xiaohua and the two village girls were captured and brought back to the young masters, seeing his father and brothers being hit relentless as they scrambled on the floor. Zhang Xiaohua tried to rush towards them but was kneed in the chest and fell. Onto the ground, his body covered in mud. When he tried to get back up, two of the men's servants came over and pressed him onto the pillar, mercilessly slapping him until fresh blood dribbled from the edges of his mouth. Seeing that Zhang Xiaohua was still young, they stopped their assault and only pressed onto his body to immobilize him. No matter how much Zhang Xiaohua struggled, he could not free himself from the arms of the two burly men servants, and his tears started falling as he watched. His father and brothers continued to be assaulted helplessly, helplessly, helplessly.